This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you. Yes, you. Thank you. Especially Chris Allen, Chris Smith, and Mark Gibson. Coming up on DTNS, Warner Media's new name for HBO Max is just Max. And you now get the chance to pay more for 4K. Also, Scott Johnson's thoughts on Rest of World's article about the replacement of gaming artists in China. And is AI the future of non-player characters? Come join us. You're here. Welcome. Come on in. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, April 12th, 2023 in Los Angeles. I'm John Merritt. And from Studio Webbit, I'm Sarah Lane. From Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. And I'm the show's producer, Roger J. Oh, my friends, we have got a packed show, so let's get right into it with the quick hits. NVIDIA officially announced the RTX 4070 graphics card, which will be available Thursday, April 13th, starting at $599 as a Founders Edition. The 4070 is the more affordable younger brother to the 4080, and it's small enough to fit in most cases. It also supports ray tracing, 1440p video at more than 100 frames per second, the new DLSS3 upscaling, and includes 12 gigabytes of VR RAM and support for the game-friendly AV1 codec. Intel Foundry Services is partnering with ARM. How? Let, Why? Let, yeah, let that sink in. Uh, to let semiconductor designers build low power systems on a chip with ARM designs using Intel's manufacturing on its 18A process. The deal will start with mobile chips, but eventually expand to automotive, Internet of Things, data center, aerospace, and beyond. There will be a combined Intel and ARM mobile reference design. Oh, uh, look at the Intel ARM reference design. Will be a thing people will say. Uh, ARM designs can now include Intel's power via power delivery tech, as well as the ribbon FET transistor architecture. MediaTek and Qualcomm have signed up to use Intel Foundry services so they can take advantage of this. And NVIDIA is considering doing so as well. Bing has started to include full chatbot responses to search queries in place of snippets. The answers show up at the top of search results, and the label tells you that it was summarized from multiple sources, and you get a text box so you can continue chatting about the topic if you so desire. Sony's Semiconductor Solutions subsidiary has invested an undisclosed amount into Raspberry Pi. And as a result, you're going to be able to put Sony's Atrios platform and IMX500 imaging sensors into your Raspberry Pi and do a bunch of cool computer vision stuff. LinkedIn announced it's partnering with security identity platform Clear for user verification in the United States. This goes beyond airports. To use the feature, you need to provide LinkedIn your government-issued ID and phone number. Then your profile will display a new verification section under the Connect and Message buttons. Global LinkedIn users will also be able to prove where they work with a verification code that's sent to their company email address. They put it back in and LinkedIn says, okay, you really work there. The company also says this feature works with 4,000 companies on the platform and hopes more are to come. LinkedIn also partnered with Microsoft to let work workplaces use the Microsoft Entra verified ID platform to issue digital workplace IDs for free for eligible users rolling out at the end of this month. And yes, we know LinkedIn is owned by Microsoft, but, you know, weird things happen in corporations. They operate independently. Yeah, partner and with each other and stuff. Yeah. Like Sony's subsidiary, going off and doing Raspberry Pi stuff. Um, yeah. You know, I used Clear to get into a stadium the other day. Oh. Yeah, I think, it, I think a go? lot of people still think of it as, oh, that's what you do at an airport. Yeah, and which, you do. Which you do. And you stand in line longer than you used to. Yeah. I've been told that's because the new administration changed the rules on what Clear could do. They could used to, used to be able to take more people at once. Anyway, oh, uh, government ruin it. Hey, government. Right. Warner Media has not done this because of the government. They did it on their own. They changed the name of HBO Max to Max, and the new tagline is the one to watch. All right. okay, yeah. uh, Warner yeah. CEO David Zaslav said that details on sports and news elements of Max will come in the next few months because uh, they want to be the one place you watch everything. But they did announce a whole slate of dramatic programming, including Duncan Egg, a uh, Game of Thrones show from George R. R. Martin, uh, a new True Detective with Jodie Foster, and a decade-long TV series covering the Harry Potter books. They, they said, we're going to do it for a decade. We don't care if you hate it. We're just going to keep doing it. Uh, Max will have a more 
stable underpinning once it relaunches and a redesigned UI. Uh, so the hubs will be genre based, not brand based. Uh, they will have user optimized recommendations. So each user will get a different set of things at the top, uh, as well as a built in kids profile right at launch. So you don't have to dig into it. And uh, the biggest one is that the app icon is now blue, not purple to distinguish it from Prime Video and Paramount <laughs> Plus and all the other blue icons. Anyway, uh, Sarah, how much is this and when are we getting it? Oh, Tom, glad you asked. So Max is coming on May 23rd. In most cases, your HBO Max app will become Max. On some platforms, you may have to download a new app and you'll be prompted to do so. The ad-free tier will stay $16 per month. An ad-supported tier stays $10 per month. Both will support two simultaneous HD streams. Then a new $20 per month tier offers four concurrent streams plus support for 4K and Dolby Atmos. Discovery Plus will still be available separately as its own app for $4.99 per month. So knowing what we know now, how do we all think of Max? Well, I think this is a sensible name change. I was worried. I thought they were going to get all weird and have too many words in it and be discovery ultimate max discovery hbo, HBO max com. plus yeah yeah i didn't want that um so i think max is a reasonable thing i already call it that in our household someone says what that what's that movie arm we're gonna watch tonight i think it's on max i mean it's it's already a natural thing so i think from a branding standpoint this is fine um i think moving hbo from the title gives them a chance to have more diverse programming but still the prestige of the hbo max programming so See, they didn't really I lose kinda, that i kind of disagree and here mm. so and maybe this is just me but um every time even you know knowing what hbo max has been for some time i think of max as oh cinemax not mm. the same mm. okay well let's say we get we all get over that i feel like taking hbo off of the name kind of i don't know takes a hit to the prestige and maybe it's just because hbo has always been something that when I was a kid, was too expensive or not even available for us, and mm. it all oh, it's you know I think of HBO as my 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 favorite series w won all the awards you know The Wire and Sopranos and you know Game of Thrones and I feel like taking it off the name hurts it rather than helps it but maybe I'm just living in the past. Listen, well, no, go ahead, y'all. Uh, I understand what you're saying. Uh, when when ESPN never fulfilled on the promise of the entertainment, the E in its name, uh, I knew it would be a failure. Uh, no, I'm I, I'm with you, Sarah. Like I I think yeah, HBO is your strongest brand. You're going to take it out of the name, but at the same point, I think people get used to really fast understanding that HBO is in that Max app, and, sure. yeah. and it probably ends up not really hurting them. So and and it's an easier thing to say. It's an easier your thing to market um so yeah i i'm with you it may not be the best in the short term for branding because hbo is a stronger brand but i'm i'm kind of with scott that it's more inclusive not that they couldn't they already do things that aren't hbo there but but it does sort of signal like you know blah 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 blah. what's in a name though like really what matters is how much does this thing cost and what do they have on it uh and that's where i i'm i'm kind of laughing at all the people throwing hate at this thing today i'm like they're not raising the price they're just adding a tier with new features and announcing a bunch of stuff yeah it's gonna have a yeah. bunch of new stuff so i'm not sure there's much to hate here really yeah if you're already annoyed with just i don't know uh the warner brothers situation or you know discovery hbo and all their oh sure forth, yeah yeah I understand that colors people's opinions of this, but this actual announcement, it's not nothing because there is a bunch of new stuff. There's new content coming. We would have probably gotten that without mm -hmm. a brand change too, of course. But um, but I don't see anything here that I'm really like having a problem with. I, I think don't think fun. your hate is incremental in relation to this. You know, yeah. it probably just stays where it was. Yeah, if you're annoyed, you're already annoyed. You'll stay annoyed. <laughs> yeah, like that's fine. The yeah. point I was making earlier about, well, but HBO you yeah, know, yeah. It has such prestige kind of thing. Maybe the company, you know, the combined companies now realize, yeah, but there are all there are going to be all these people who maybe could part with, you know, $10 per month type thing. But they go, oh, HBO, yeah, I don't know. You know, it's not going to have the stuff that I want. It's, it's uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. you know, it's 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 always been sort of the, you know, uh, Oscar or Emmy winning series that maybe I'm just not that into or, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm interested in other things. Mm -hmm. And this is the company being like, we're still that. 
and we're going to have more of that. That's but a subsection. It, yeah, but the, but but it's but it's uh it's 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 for everybody. It's it's yeah. the one to watch. Yeah, you know. it, it's going to have sports. It's going to have news. They're going to work CNN into this. They're going to work the NBA into this. They're going to work the NHL into this. They're going to have all this drama, the Game of Thrones stuff. The, the, the thing is, like, eventually HBO is going to become meaningless it, because if mm-hmm. as, as cable winds down, there's not going to be a place where you just get HBO and kids are going to wonder, like, why is this? good programming called hbo i don't well, know well and you know it, last, when's the last time you heard home box office i know what it means yeah right right but but i it, it's sort of an antiquated term at this point it's like well it's not we have lots of them it's home HBO. box offices mm-hmm. yeah yeah, the real, the real, the real thing that needs to happen is long-term, sustained quality content from the HBO brand. Then no one will worry about it. If suddenly HBO put out nothing but garbage from this point on, then, then, then dig the grave and we're done with HBO. But I think as long as they keep yeah. that up, it's not going to hurt. You them. give me dragon shows, I will watch. Yeah, you call you yourself go. whatever you want. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> uh, well, we talk a lot about whether AI is uh, scary or great or will take our jobs or will make our jobs better. An article from restofworld.org talks about how generative AI has helped game developers in China create visually stunning landscapes with greater ease and efficiency. That sounds good, right? For example, NetEase, one of China's largest gaming companies, use AI to generate terrain and foliage for its game Naraka Blade Point, which helped the company reduce the time and cost associated with with creating these elements manually. However, this increased efficiency also resulted in the displacement of traditional 2D concept artists who, in certain cases at least, were no longer needed for this part of the production process. This above was written by ChatGPT. I had slight edits because I'm a human, <laughs> but that was what ChatGPT told me to say. And ChatGPT also had this qu- question for you, Scott. <laughs> All right, great. As an artist and podcaster, Scott, what yeah. is your perspective on the use of AI technology and the creative process? Do you see it as a threat to traditional art forms or an opportunity to innovate and explore new possibilities in the arts? Oh, Answer well, correctly, Scott. Thank you, Chat GPT, for your <laughs> Scott. Say, I'm sorry, I cannot help you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Chat GPT, I can't do that. Um, yeah, I. Uh, it's funny this came up today because I was already brewing on this kind of all morning. I've been thinking a ton about everything from Mid Journey's latest version to what Chat GPT four has been doing, and and this gold rush we're witnessing, and how is it really going to affect people? And then Tom tossed that article over, and I went. Oh, so we actually have a real world on the ground example of it's a media. What people impact. are afraid of. Yeah. yeah. And seeing the results. Like these mm-hmm. people have lost their jobs or they not just fears, but on. actual things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it's always been, you can always it's especially in the video game world, and, and that's where I'll come at this from for this example. But when you look at China, it is often that that is the accelerated version of everything else. So we're we're doing a slow dev over here. They are like, oh, people like RPGs. We're going to just churn out 50 of them and they're all going to be kind of bad, but it doesn't matter because it's volume and it's fast and it's on budget and blah, blah, blah. Like there's a lot of that going on over there. And say what you will, that's just the way of things. So when you hear about that effect happening there immediately, that tells me the rest of the world will get there eventually. We'll have a slower go of it, but we will get to a place where we start to see his job gone and her job gone and that sort of thing. And while I think to answer Chat GPT's question and Sarah's conveyance of it, I think that that's true. To a small degree, we're going to have some of that happen. I'm more and more coming around to the idea that if there are 10 people on your art team and you reduce that team to two, because it turns out two people with good prompts and then good abilities to then take those prompts, generate content, go, well, we need to tweak it. They go in, they change it, they tweak it, whatever. Two people can now do what 10 people did, and they can do that a lot faster. If that's the scenario, that sounds like doom. But Mm -hmm. what it probably means in practicality is suddenly the production pipeline is shrunk. The cost of doing business is shrunk. Small indies all the way up to big publishers. That process shrinks so that more projects can get done. Uh, We always go back to that Lotus 123 Excel example where, you know, accountants were worried that stuff was going to kill their business. And instead it it ex- exponentially expanded it. Well, why? Well, it's because you could do so much more now with the time you have and the employees you have, which just translates to more employees and better budgets and blah, blah, blah. So 
I'm I'm half convinced that those eight people of those 10 will end up in jobs similar to the two that stayed. Uh, there will, will there be less uh, 20 man art teams on, on teams building out art? Yes. Will there be more opportunities for those artists to fill those new nuanced roles? I also, also think yes. yes. Yeah. So I think it's complicated as usual. Like all these things are complicated. There is immediate, there's immediate fear. Part of me has a little bit of like, ah, freak out. And part of me has a little bit, but wait a minute, let's think about this logically. Where does this stuff usually lead? I have a lot of conversations with chat GPT just to see where it can go and where my brain goes. I find it cathartic in a weird way because it's like, Hey, do this. I asked it to write a comic strip today. It did a terrible job. It's horrible. It's not funny. <laughs> it doesn't know comedy. It's comedy is bad, like really bad. And it, and it, at the end of the joke, it, it forced me to read an explanation of why it came to that joke. And as you know, explaining your own jokes, pretty bad form let me tell you why it's funny <laughs> yeah that's how you know it's good. yeah that's basically yeah. it and so as a to, to sum it up i would just say it's a little bit from column a and column b how it all susses out and where the numbers land we don't know but i'm more confident now than i was initially that we're going to find ways around this that we just don't see yet yeah yeah so that's I, my that's my overall my my and I listen. I'm never in favor of people losing their jobs uh, because uh, you know they, yeah. you know they they weren't good at what they did. You know, let's assume that everybody's great at their jobs. We also talk about and especially people who work in larger organizations, middle management. What's this person doing? You know, what's this manager actually doing? And not that they're not doing anything, but in many cases, it turns out that if you go back to the drawing board, you can be more efficient with fewer resources, depending on who you've got on the team, rather than, well, this is the way we've always done it. So I think we're, we're, this is, this is the beginning of the next stage of, okay, well, we don't have to do it that way anymore. So the people who are freed up to do other things aren't necessarily just going to sit around jobless. It just, you know, it remains to be seen exactly what that's going to look like in another five years. Also, don't forget this rest of world article uh, talked about a lot of illustrators who are now working more because this makes them more productive. They're being mm -hmm. overworked. There's a danger of overwork, not lack of work, because they can now make more games. So yeah. Right. And it's like, oh, you have this AI tool? Well, you can do three times as much work now uh, because it doesn't take you as long to do every individual item. Uh, and then there's a backlash. People know sometimes if it was AI made or if they hear it's AI made, they may just decide, like, well, we don't like it. We're not paying as much for that. So so this is not all over yet. No, not at all. But if consumers Consumers can't tell the difference then then well if they on the whole can't really tell the difference that just means you're going to want to try to sell to them more often which means make more games which means you need more people which means you need better people we'll just get used to six fi six fingered people it's, it'll be fine yeah it's fine <laughs> we're all heading there anyway eventually we'll all have those yeah we'll fingers. probably yeah it, we, humans well, will imitate art it didn't it didn't <laughs> end well for that one six figured man but you know no, no, it's, a new, it's a new era inconceivable yeah. uh i love the general banter and odd topics it's easy to see that you are all friends as well as co-workers food talk <laughs> quizzes have been fun more zany tech and science topics these are all human things written by humans in response to our survey. Thank you, everyone, for taking our survey. If you haven't taken it yet, here's your chance to express your opinion, opinions on DTNS. Uh, let us know at what you think is working and what you think is not working at dailytechnewsshow.com slash survey. We may know the future of the NPC, the non-player character. Scientists at Stanford University created a Sims-like RPG virtual world and then let 25 characters play in it, each character controlled by a chat GPT with a little custom code to increase capabilities for memory and experiences. And they have a preprint paper up on archive.org. That's what the X, the paper one, A-R-X-I-V.org, if you want to see what they found. Uh, here's the short version. They created a town called Smallville. Get it? Yep. Small. Yep. I get it. Yep. Uh, with a bar, cafe, college, grocery, park, and some houses. Each character was given a paragraph description. That was their seed memory to get them started. Then they let the characters just wander around the town to see what they would do. What do you think they did? Mm. I'm guessing they interacted 
in a uh, human-like yes. way. It sounds like a lovely town. It seems mm-hmm. like they'd you know probably get some sure. coffee and yeah. get some These groceries. Are just, and... I mean, you're not wrong. Here's here's what they they said in the paper. They wake up, cook breakfast, head to work. The artists paint. The authors write. They form opinions, notice each other, initiate conversations. They remember and reflect on days past as they plan the next day. Here's where it gets really weird. Humans can also enter the town. So you can go in and and control a character. You can either be a new character or you can act as the inner voice of one of the AI controlled players. So you can like give it prompts and be like, you should go do this. Uh, Though, and here I'll quote again, the full generative agent architecture produced more believable results than the humans who did the role playing (laughs) did. Because they had an independent group of humans assess like how realistic were these characters, not knowing which ones were humans and which were AI. Uh, Scott, tell us what the scientists, what else the scientists found. Well, here's what they found. And by the way, they really should have put us a a little mild mannered Clark Kent in Smallville. I don't know why they didn't do that, but whatever. There's next time scientists. Anyway, they identified three main types of emergent behaviors. I was talking about emergence in video games. So this is good. Uh, Number one, information diffusion. Uh, This is sharing info that spreads throughout the town. So think of, uh, you know, my... Mm -hmm. Guy on the end of the street says, "Ah, oh, my, I smashed my toe." I heard Clark Ken is down the road. Yeah, gossip. Yeah, exactly. It's gossip. They gossiped. Yeah. Okay. They got yeah. gossip. Yeah. Basically, nice. that's it. Um, my mother would be all about informational diffusion. Anyway, number two, relationship <laughs> memory, remembering past interactions with each other and sometimes talking about them. So this is you coming up to a dude yeah. at the store. Weren't and then you next sick time you last see him, week? Yeah, he remembers. Weren't and you the guy that cut me off in the parking lot? Yeah, yeah. we're Those, not friends. Exactly. I've got a beef. Uh, and third uh, was coordination. This is planning a party together, attending an event together. Um, you can view a pre-computed interactive demo online as well. I don't know. Do we think this is the future of NPCs? Okay. I kind of do, by the way. I'm I think all you in skipped over the event planning part because here's an example. Yeah. An agent uh, that went under the name Isabella Rodriguez planned a Valentine's Day party at Hobbs Cafe and invited friends and customers, decorated the cafe with the help of her friend Maria, who invited her crush Klaus to the party. Twelve people heard about it. Five attended. Three said they were busy and uh, <laughs> uh, the other four just didn't go. This is frighteningly like humans. Right? Yeah. <laughs> A lot yeah, like people. It's like it actually it like hurts my heart a little bit because I'm like, oh man, so many people didn't come to my Valentine party. Mm. Now you know how the and my crush AI was agent invited, Isabella. and I really wanted. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, we park, didn't, our, they didn't tell us whether Klaus went or not. Good if we out. if we park our biases to the side, and when I say we, I mean people in my circles who are very skeptical of all things AI. Just park those biases for a second and think about what you come to a video game for, uh, since this is kind of modeled after that. You come to a video game to be impressed by what the technology gives you, either in gameplay or presentation or whatever it may be. And what are we trying to do in a small town in an RPG? We want that place to feel lived in. We want these people to feel real. We want those conversations or barks, as they call them. We want that to feel natural and as if it was always meant to be there. This feels like a huge step in that non-scripted direction. And if you mm-hmm. if you are a gamer who enjoys that stuff, I don't think this is something to be concerned with, like at all. Not no, I feel like it's something where you're like, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's exciting. Just if like you, real life. If you've ever wanted to go up to that orc that gives you the mission to kill twelve pigs and turn them into a vegetarian, <laughs> this is you the technology <laughs> that could make that happen, right? Yeah, right. Was it this show that you introduced? I think you introduced me to character.ai here on mm-hmm. a Wednesday one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've that was about that it, was yeah. a rudimentary but real example of of this, that kind of thing. You could kind of create your own, you know, your own adventure, your own uh, text adventure as you went along, and it did go in some ridiculous ways. But given the right walls and the right sort of, I don't know, human touch on the outside of this. You could create really compelling emergent experiences. We're all we've been begging for those for decades as gamers. This might actually be the first time we see true emergent behavior yeah. in our games. And it's to me is absolutely fascinating and exciting. I love it. Can't wait. Well, uh, you might have waited to use your print screen button uh, for the lifetime of print your keyboard. Button. Yeah, the print screen <laughs> button. Uh, if you're not familiar, this might be kind of fun because it's getting new life. So this is the button that's probably up on the top row of your keyboard to the right next to scroll lock and pause break buttons. If you're a MacBook user, don't worry. You are not not (laughs) missing anything. You don't have this. 
Microsoft, though, plans to change the default behavior of print screen in Windows 11. Right now in Windows, print screen captures your screen and puts it in the clipboard. That is, that's helpful, right? However, in Windows 11 Preview Insider Builds, it now launches the snipping tool. That would give you the option to capture the whole screen or capture a portion of the screen and, you know, be able to do a little, do a little muss and fuss from there. You might say, okay, well, I already do Windows Shift S. Why should I stop doing that? You can't. You can still do that. That's not going away. You just have other options with this button that you may have never used before. And for the curmudgeons who say, mm, I don't like new behavior. I want things to go the way back to the way that they were before. You can change the behavior back in accessibility settings. And if you've remapped print screen, the update won't even change that. Are we all happy? I think everybody um, gets covered there, except for the person who's annoyed that they have to go change the setting, right? That's the only friction point. If they're like, no, I like the print screen to do the whole screen. Ah, I got to dig an accessibility. Yeah, 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 it's going to take you 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. For me, it's a key I never use. So I'm all, I'm happy to have keys that have let, sat long dormant actually have some usability. So I'm actually kind of for I, I wish the is... print screen button worked on Mac. I mean, I know you could just do Command know. Shift 3 or whatever, but. Command yeah. Shift 3 and Command Shift 4 are, um, I, I mean, I use them all day, every day. Mm -hmm. What uh, is the clear button? We have a button called clear. I don't know what that does on Macs either. What is that? Has everyone ever used the clear button on the I don't see a key? clear button. I don't have a clear button on the MacBook Pro. It's probably because oh, it's a compressed This is my keyboard. magic trackpad. I don't, I don't, or a keyboard rather. I it don't probably know. clears out the ROM. No, I'm just kidding. I, I <laughs> clear, uh. clear. <laughs> yeah. It just yeah. erases Cl everything. Need more cloud storage? We'll <laughs> just clear that out for you. You hit, you hit it right before defibrillation. You go clear. Yeah. And then, yeah. uh, all right, let's check out the mailbag. All right, uh, we got... A bunch of thoughts on VPNs from our discussion with Dr. Nikki that we had yesterday. Uh, Andrew wrote in that he likes using VPN through Apple One because it uses two VPNs. So no one company has the full set of your data and is already on your Apple devices for free for iCloud Plus subscribers. Eric wanted to point out that HTTPS will thwart most man-in-the-middle attacks and attempt at um, attempts at impersonation. So if you don't have a VPN, which you know we said you should, but if you don't, you can look for HTTPS when you browse to just be a little bit safer. John uses a travel router. John says he has all security provisions in place every time he sets it up in a hotel and his devices already know how to connect. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, very smart. And finally, uh, R. W. Nash wrote, I don't want to, well, actually, you, Tom, but I think Allison Sheridan went with PIA for her <laughs> Yeah, VPN. she did. And she, she, she texted me this morning uh, saying, thanks for the shout out, but... You got it wrong. Uh, apologies for that. Allison did not go with Proton. She went with PIA. So go. I will link to her uh, VPN breakdown uh, in the show notes today as well. Sorry for for misremembering that. Also, Stoic Squirrel says, and Amos, uh, our producer, says that the clear key is used for calculator apps. So you can just oh. clear, you know, without having to find the little C. Oh, there's my clear key. Weird. Yeah. All I had yeah. to do was look over the numbers that I never use over on the right-hand side. Yeah, okay. there it is. How about that? Oh, that's All fun. Right. All right. That shows how little math Let's I crunch some numbers. Numbers. Yeah. yeah. That's handy. Clear key. Uh, I do not have a clear key because I'm using uh, Logitech K120, which is meant for Windows. Mm. Oh. Tony says, I had a job previously where we sold products on Amazon and we had to battle all sorts of shady things going on on Amazon. This is in response to us talking about the, the review merging fraud. Uh, one of the crazy things that people do other than stealing each other's buy box was to revise a dead listing with a new product that had no relation to the original product. That way you'd gain all the positive reviews from the old ah. product. It's always good to check and see when a listing was first created and really do your homework and read all the reviews and pay attention to when the reviews were posted. Thank you, Tony. That is something I've never thought to do. Hey, when was this product uh, listed? Yeah. You know? I do Was read it the yesterday reviews. or was it yeah. like four years ago? Because if it was yesterday, all these reviews wouldn't make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I've read a couple of reviews where I'm like, that's not the product here, which immediately raised a red flag too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Well, thank you to everybody who gives us feedback. Feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com is where to send those thoughts. Keep them coming. You make our show better. Also, you, Scott Johnson, make our show the best. Let folks well, know where they can keep up with your work. Well, that's very nice of you to say. Uh, it's not true, but it's nice. Hey, check this out. Uh, <laughs> if you are interested at all in the card game I keep bringing up on the show every couple of weeks or so, uh, called Rock, or excuse me, <laughs> that's the last game I made. This game's called Dungeon Murder. Um, and it is the next game I'm making, and we're going to, I think, push go on the Kickstarter tomorrow. So now would be a great time to go sign up for updates and such at DungeonMurder.com. I am very proud of this game, and everyone who keeps playing it keeps telling me how great it is, so must be good. Yay! Uh, so if you want to follow this and be a part of it and maybe get a copy for yourself, that Kickstarter should start tomorrow. Um, I'll let everybody know on all my socials and that, which you can find at frogpants.com or go straight to dungeonmurder.com and you'll find it as well. You could do a, um, a sequel called Dungeon Murder Rocks. Whoa, that's pretty good. Yeah. Just do all hair metal band enemies and Something stuff like, like that. Something like that, yeah. Okay. Maybe kind of an American Idol esque. Love thing. it. Yeah. It's yeah. not bad. <laughs> How GPT good a dungeon murder are idea. you exactly? Yeah. <laughs> Well, we want to extend a special thanks to Osmond Herikstad, who is one of our top lifetime supporters for DTNS. Osmond, we see you, we hear you, we support you, and thanks for supporting us. And thanks for all the years of support, in fact. Now, if you're a brand new patron, you also get a shout out on the show. Uh, so if you want to start a new streak of new patrons, today's the day. Patreon.com slash DTNS. You will start to get the ad-free extended show on Patreon if you do that. It's called Good Day Internet. And today on Good Day Internet, in a world after news organizations leave Twitter, Will the social network return to its heady days of lunch updates and misfired DMs? Only one person knows for sure. You, the patron who gets the extended show. John Wick returns this summer. Ooh. Oh, I'm going to go to that movie. Wow. Mm -hmm. You can also catch this show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We are back tomorrow with, drum roll please, Patrick Norton joining us. Maybe he'll smash a computer, maybe not. I don't know. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>